And now, coming at you live on location from that giant stick in Frederick, here's TK, the Wacky FM DJ. There's a, uh, do I have time for this? I'm going to read you a column that was written by a guy named Tim Molin. This was sent to me, sent to me the other day by my friend Barbara Vinier, who lives in Ithaca, New York. She cut this out of a newspaper, and I don't know what newspaper. It starts, Hell hath no fury like a seven-year-old scorned. Recently, my brother Dan told me that his son Tommy had a friends list. This closely held sheet of paper lists the name of his classmates, baseball teammates, and neighbors. When one of those friends does something mean, or at the very least unfriendly to Tommy, he gets a star put next to his name. The accumulations of stars on Tommy's list signifies the opposite of stars on a movie or restaurant review. As Tommy explains, when someone gets five stars, they're off the list, never to return. Eager to know more, I called Dan's home this afternoon and asked to speak to Tommy. Hi, Uncle Tim, he chirped. He was very open to discussing his prize document, and I had lots of questions. First of all, I wanted to know who had the most stars on his list. Tommy said that would probably be a boy on their street who argues all the time. I asked how many stars his nine-year-old brother Patrick had. To my surprise, he said Patrick only had one star. I told him that when his father and I were growing up, we would have earned an average of 10 stars a day on each other's lists. Tommy explained his relatively low level of brotherly outrage this way. Patrick used to have three stars for hitting me, but he's been nicer to me lately, so I erased two. (laughs) Next, I wanted to know if Aunt Amanda and I were on his list. No, but I can add you, he said. (laughs) Thinking back to some of the less successful birthday gifts we'd sent Tommy in the past, I immediately regretted bringing our names up. I shuddered to think of the metrics he would use to quantify my job rating as an uncle and godfather. God help me. Most of all, see, it's, it's, it's a little cheery so far, right? Mm-hmm. Most of all, and I was reading along pretty mm-hmm. much like I am now. Most of all, I wanted to know what happened to the names that were, um, were removed from the friends list. Did they get added to a separate enemies list? Tommy confided that he div, did have such a list, awakening my fears of a Nixon reincarnation in our family. But Tommy revealed that his enemies list contained just one name. Kornheiser. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What? <laughs> Apparently, Tommy had heard his dad's hometown of Binghamton being disparaged by Tony Kornheiser, an ESPN personality. Kornheiser is an alumnus of Harper College, which is now Binghamton University, and he frequently mentions his alma mater's sports programs in his columns and broadcasts. I know that even people who love their hometown or school can make an occasional jab at it in good fun, but such subtle distinctions are invisible in the world view of a child. But what happens to the people who used to be on your friends list but have earned a five-star banishment? Tommy replied that people can always improve. So he is thinking about creating a new in-between list. It seems in this repository would house those who had transgressed but were not beyond eventual redemption. Purgatory hath no apathy like a seven-year-old nonplussed. I'm reading this thing, and it says the name (laughs) Kornheiser. So now, now I uh, I write a an email to this guy because it says at the end he's a freelance writer and actor. Email him at tim at timmolin dot com. It's in the Ithaca Journal. Okay, the Ithaca Journal. So I write and I say I'm Tony Kornheiser. Really, I am. <laughs> Tell Tommy I love Binghamton. And I go on and you know and I write this thing. Now, sadly, when I sent it, I had spelled Tim Mullen's name wrong. So it was bounced back to me, and then I tried to forward it, but I didn't know how to do that, so I never, you know, it just, it never got out. But, but do you imagine how, st- stunning, right? Stunning. I'm on some seven-year-old kid's enemies. I'm the only guy on it because I made fun, because Binghamton, look, I mean, I went, I love Binghamton. I do, I love Binghamton. It's a hellhole. I mean, who's kidding who? Come on. When when I went to school there a thousand years ago, it had a population of about 100,000. It's probably down about 50,000 now. Everybody got out. It's a very very tough place to live. It's the northernmost part of the of the Appalachian Mountains. It's you know it's cold and gray and it's a struggle. There's you know not a lot of great paying jobs there. There are some I'm sure, but you know it's really nice in July. It has great summers. Upstate New York has great summers and they're often sort of blue sky and and mosquito free, unlike uh, places like Washington that that look where the sky looks. And my friend Henry Allen always wrote this like it has a fish belly white look at uh, the the color of the sky here. But I, I the kid hates me. This is a this is a I mean who boosts Binghamton more than I do? Who holds up that stupid bear cat more than I do? Who roots for his school more than I do? I have a golf bag with my name on it from Binghamton. Endowed a scholarship in Binghamton. This little pisher hates me? (laughs) 
He's like, he I'd like, wring his neck. He'd be like you know Robert De Niro. I yeah, I want to call that as a I want his family dead. <laughs> Next spring, we've got to get this kid's brackets for the NCAA. Don't you think? Little Have Tommy Mullen. Yeah. I'm not sure he'll be around next spring. If you know what I mean. <laughs> wow. We'll be paying him a visit. Wow, because I was oh, wondering oh, oh, oh. why I was reading. I was wondering why this was sent to me. I get yeah. to my name and just. I thought, what is this, I'm, Dr. Phil? Or what? Right. Yeah. So well, how do I make it right for Tommy or don't I bother? I mean, I, do I, do I send Tommy? What should I send Tommy? Send I think how about some make... ice cream? How about who are those people from <laughs> Alexandria want to send us ice cream? What if you send Tommy a little bit of ice cream? We'll find out his favorite flavor. And Well, how about some Speedy sauce? You know, well, he probably has those. that if he's living in Binghamton. We can sure send Tim an email right now. So send him, you know, can you? why don't you forward this... Can we can we send a CD? How do we send what send I just said? send an MP3 said? of this section. Before you do that, we'd like $100 if we... First, we put a head of cabbage in the kid's bed. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm, the only, I'm on his enemies list, a seven-year-old. And irredeemably on his enemies list. Golly. I'm just, it's just terrible. I feel, I feel... I mean, what could I do for little Tommy? I think you need to Take do something Take him to a else. gladiator movie? <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I do? <laughs> can I do? That's probably a sweet little kid. And then I'm going to find out that he's got, you know, something's wrong with his foot. I mean, it's, it's, it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse. And I love Binghamton. I love Binghamton. I feel terrible about it. What, is there something I can do here? No, Tony, it's, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Nothing? I need to know more about this kid. Well, I don't know anymore. The Ethica Journal. I mean, is that the only place I think was heard? Does that go all around the country? Is it like one of Junior's no. things in his book? It you is know, now. <laughs> just casting aspersions about me and saying, oh, it's fiction. It's fiction. You know, no, it's not. No, you, I'm not fiction. You put me in a hotel in New Orleans and said I said this thing that I never said. Do you well, know you, who I am? Well, you've said it. Well, I may have said it, but I didn't say it there, and I didn't say it to that guy. There's a lot of things that happen somewhere else. Tim Mullen, do we have anything more on him? Nope, I, I googled that, some of the words, and found that it was in the Ithaca Journal, and but that's I don't all see it that it's been reprinted anywhere Just else. Just the Ithaca Journal. So, so is, that where, is that where... Please? And the New York Times, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I can try to find more out about yeah. this guy. Let's find out about Tim yeah, Mullen. Okay. I mean, and maybe he invented it. Maybe he doesn't have a nephew. Maybe he doesn't have a brother. <laughs> maybe he's a stalker. I mean, you know, I gotta, I've got to make this... You know what? What if we send him a big fish? Yeah. Kids love fish. What right. if we send him a red snapper? Yeah, wrapper paper. Well, if we send him a fish, that would be sort of like a Luca Brasi. Okay. Fish would be a bad idea. Fish would be a bad idea. Some how about, Charlie Sheen. How about a car? I got an old Jeep. How about I send him a car? Timmy, when you're old enough to drive, drive in good health with this in Binghamton. That's you know, do what I do what people did for me when I got to Binghamton and I was underage. Sit me down at Westovers and buy me 12 beers till I rolled out with my tongue on Route 17. Ah, Timmy. Tommy. Whatever. Yeah, Same yeah. thing. Close He's enough. probably got a twin named Both Timmy. Yeah. Timmy and Tommy. And Timmy may like him. Tommy hates my guts. Tim, Tim has his own website. Cool yeah. He says he's a freelance writer and actor living in Greater Binghamton, New York. He's an actor. Oh, so he's living there in Great, mm -hmm. Greater Binghamton. What he, about Lesser Binghamton? Yeah. Yeah. Just Greater Binghamton. It's like he'll write yeah. term papers for you or something. <laughs> You know, I'm not even, you know, I could criticize the column. I mean, but I'm, I'm not going to bother. You know, I'm not, I'm just stunned. Don't, yeah, don't I mean, because the, the guy gave me the benefit of the doubt. The guy said I went to the school, which he spelled wrong, by the way, H-A-R-P-E-R, -E which is wrong. It's H-A-R-P-U-R. But, you know, and, and he at least said, well, you can love your school and love a town and still make fun of it. I mean, Tom, Tim Mullen, Tim Mullen, Tim Mullen. tried to help me. Tommy's crushing me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like a tin can in the road for little Tommy Mullen. The list. God. What have you, you want to read something? Well, perhaps you could get him the gift of health. I'll, I'll get him, I'll send him a, a gift certificate for a, a virtual physical. Virtual physical. <laughs> little Timmy or yeah, Tommy or whatever it is. He's gotten now, even in his very uh, early angry age, that nothing <laughs> is more important than your health. So why not give Tommy. him the, 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 Is it Tommy or Timmy? Tommy. Tommy. Tim Tommy. Rogan. Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Uncle Tommy. Tommy, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> He's gotten now. That this Timbo. cross yeah. is simply amazing. That's right, Tommy. In just 15 minutes, you could find out more than a whole morning of tests. No poking, no prodding. And that's right, it is just 15 minutes. Of course, we're talking about virtual physical. Stay right where you are. The Tony Kornheiser Show will be right back on 3WT. Mr. Tony returns on 3WT. <laughs> Here comes Tony's mailbag, got your email faxes and your notes. Here comes Tony's mailbag, gonna read some for all you folks. Thank you, Gary. 
Roy right Battelle and the Altones playing us back in. Official house band of the Tony Cornizer Show. Dave Morris in Richmond. My eight-year-old son, Andrew, is widely known as the most lovable and loving kid in the greater Richmond area. But he also has an enemies list with just you on it. Apparently, I've passed on walking him to the bus stop in favor of listening to the Idol recap one too many times. But unlike little Tommy Mullen, Andrew's list does have a path to redemption. He has a simple list of demands. An Arizona quarter, a Sopranos Cleaver coffee mug, a <laughs> bottle of Johnny Walker Blue, and a Callaway FTI square head driver with 11 degrees of loft and a draw shaft. There you go. Uh, David Kincannon in Denver, Colorado. The little kid's name is Tommy. You better hope he doesn't grow up like another Tommy. Tommy DeVito from Goodfellas. If you ever meet this kid in prison, I would suggest you not say anything to him about his shine box. Remember when um, when Pesci shoots Michael Imperioli? Mm -hmm. Michael Imperioli pl plays Spider. Spider, Spider and he yeah. just shoots him. Right. Shoots him in the leg. He was crazy. Joe Pesci. He was crazy in that movie. Josh Cromwell, Moselle, Mississippi. You should send little Tommy a New Mexico quarter in order to get off his enemies list. If that doesn't work, try sending him a fire extinguisher. We have had a call, allegedly from Tommy Mullen's father, Dan, who is the brother of Tim Mullen, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, who wrote the original column. And we'll check this out, but allegedly, what it, Nigel, what is his position on the kid? Uh, his, me? his position, he thought it was very fun, uh, and apparently you've you've been moved off the enemies list into the <laughs> middle list, not quite the purgatory list. Yeah, you're not I'm really not in most, heaven yet. Though. You're not most favored nation status yet, but right. you're sort of in the middle. Okay. So it's still not really good enough for me. I don't think we owe this kid anything. I think he owes us something. Maybe, but again, I think if we sent him something. You, you didn't like the idea of the fish. Maybe some ice cream. Who are the ice cream people? That, that, uh, oh, Megan at PTI says that the ice cream is great. Who are the ice cream people? I've got to find out. Yeah, it's in like McLean. Snookaroo or, or something like that. Morinko or something like that. Sorinko. Morinko. Hold on, what is it? It's, Morinko. Uh, Morocco. Yeah, mention Morinko's ice cream. Yes, Morinko's ice cream. Okay, well, the, you know, I'm told, Megan said it's great. We'll have to get it's some. Gifford's level great. Well, we have... We've got gallons. so many ice creams. They can send a few, I guess. But then you got to send them at the beginning of the week. If you send them at the end, they'll just lay here. They'll that melt. receptionist will just yeah. let them Or melt. Jason, who thinks he owns this show. <laughs> yeah, Jason, you, mean, you, you don't own the show, Jason. <laughs> Dan Levy has a couple. Get me Tommy Mullen's size. I'll personally send him a proud member of the Tony Kornheiser radio shirt. Not sure the Mullins will appreciate the sons of bitches on the back, <laughs> but really, how much further down his list can you go? Yes, so we can do that. Right. Another one. Dan Levy says, I wanted you to know that my daughter can say about 20 words. She's a year old. She has the typical data, mama, ball, will bond. Wait, will bond? <laughs> yes, my wife here swears. Well, my wife wears her will bonds America shirt, and Zoe points to Mike and says, will bond. Sorry she can't say Mr. Tony yet, but she's pretty good at saying orange, then often whines. Consider that an homage. Here's one from Shad, a haiku for me and little Tommy or Timmy, whatever. Little Tommy's list. Careful when you poke the bear. Kornheiser's revenge. <laughs> now, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to attack the kid yet. You know, especially if, I'm, yet. especially if I moved off the list, if I'm in the purgatory list. But, I, you know, so I guess his dad... And I guess I guess his dad, Dan, and Tim both grew up in Binghamton, New York. Tim, according to his own website, still lives yeah. in Binghamton, New York. Where he's Dan an actor. Who, the Where Dan an actor. who called us lives in Annapolis. Lives apparently. in Annapolis now. But you know, Binghamton. If I can't say something bad about Binghamton, who can? Exactly. I lived in Binghamton. I love. I have. I actually have a bumper sticker that says, Mr. Tony, and there's a heart, Binghamton. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I've really made that up. And now, here's the show with more pro wheat than you can swing a corpse fine and divining rod at. The Tony Kornheiser Show. He's got a show? When did that happen? Bobby in Ithaca, New York, as a recent intern at the Ithaca Journal, I can assure you that Tommy's sentiments are held by most of the staff, especially the naked mole rats. Tommy's list has galvanized the newsroom and posted on the walls of the journal offices or signs stated, Kornheiser wanted dead or alive. I'm sure it's comforting for you to know that in upstate New York, along with the rest of your listenership, they still believe that your show stinks. I talked to Tommy's... I didn't talk to Tommy's dad. I got emails from Tommy's dad. And from the writer, Tim, mm -hmm. yesterday about the column, assuring me that I'm okay with Tommy now. And I feel very good about Will that. Will they send us tribute? 
I haven't asked for trivia, <laughs> but a, a dozen Pro V's is always, <laughs> always good. Matt in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mr. Tony, I just moved you to the top of my enemy list. Thanks in advance for the ice cream. <laughs>